Hello, my beautiful Starbeam. I'm about to go in the store right now, but I wanted to do a chat about an experience I had today with quantum shifting and what that looked like, okay? I'm still kind of like bouncing back from that. So I have been on this journey of not needing to work for money. Like I love what I do and I don't really see it as work, like helping people in their lives, uh, but I don't want to have a codependency on that to receive large sums of money. I want to be an open channel for all types of unexpected abundance from all over, right? Okay, so one of the lessons that I've learned on my spiritual journey is if you are blocking your blessings in one area, it's blocking them in all areas, like your receiving mode and how open you are to the universe blessing you. And so this is a couple of years ago, I was out on a walk and my higher self chimed in and was like, how are we going to send you a large sum of money if you can't even accept compliments from people? Okay. <laughs> or people trying to love and support you. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Okay. <laughs> because ultimately you receiving unexpected money from the universe is a form of being taken care of. And I had some very deep hyper independence wounds that was saying like, oh no, you know, people are always out to get me or they're going to weaponize it against me or hold it against me. You know, what do I have to do in return? Which those things are true. Like those things happened in my life. And the reasons that those happened is because I experienced abandonment and trust wounds in childhood. And then I got more evidence of that as I continued throughout life life, right? <laughs> and so it was just like a limiting belief that dug in deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And then I had it projected outside of me, but that was coming from me. That was my stuff. <laughs> okay. That's not other people because you create the ra reality around you. Right. And sometimes it's triggering for people to hear because they're like, oh, well, I didn't create these negative external circumstances outside of me. Like, why would I do that? And I'm like, well, you didn't mean to. It's the subconscious programming. It's like what you were taught as a child about how reality works, how you interact with yourself and other people. It's the limiting beliefs, the trauma, you know, all that stuff. Like that is what is creating the reality. So when we start to heal those things, then we start to see different in the 3D, right? And I'm living, breathing a testament to that. Like I, you know, used to be so anxious and depressed and body dysmorphia and all this stuff. And I was just living this wild life that was not in resonance with my soul. <laughs> okay. And then I started to heal those things. Now I'm living a completely different life. Okay. So from somebody that has done it themselves, it is possible. And I'm sure if you're watching this, you, you've done that and seen that too in your own life, right? <laughs> I'm sure you're a very self-aware conscious being, <laughs> multidimensional being. So anyway, I'm getting off track here. So <laughs> So I have been working on being more in receiving mode and taking compliments into my heart space and love and support and guidance and stuff. But recently I have realized that I'm still a little blocked up in those areas. And I didn't think that I was because, you know, you'd be fooling yourself. You'd be lying to yourself, right? And I have recently had some people that wanted to help me like just because they love me, you know, want to support me in like big ways. And instead of saying no, like, oh, that's too much. Or like, I don't want to push you out. Or, you know, you don't have to do all that. I was like, yes, I would love that. Please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I love being taken care of. Which is a really wild thing to say compared to me like years ago because I would have been like, I don't need nobody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because, you know, <laughs> if you have hyper independence wounds, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I'm like, yes, please. I would love to just be taken care of all the time, whether it's from other people or the universe, because I'm not a lazy person. You know what I mean? Like, I am always out here. Okay. <laughs> like doing all the things. <laughs> but it is nice to not have to do all those things on my own right? And be loved on and give and giving gifts and support. And so after I said yes to those people, I just started receiving all kinds of stuff, all these gifts and like, just like, it started rating it out to all my areas of my life and my business and my social media, like everything really just started taking off. And I actually feel more rested than I ever have. And I'm experiencing more abundance than I ever 
that, <laughs> okay? And that's another thing that I've been working on too is not doing the hustle grind type of energy and just being more at rest and peace, which peace can feel really weird in your body if that's a newer sensation too. It's like, oh, well, I need to be doing all, th all the things 24 seven. And like, that's very exhausting, okay? But I have carried a lot of masculine energy my whole entire life. I just have a very masculine soul, okay? And, you know, taking inspired action steps is great. We love that. But a lot of those inspired action steps that I was taking was coming from a disempowered situation or disempowered consciousness, just not checking in where my intentions are. And I've been really mindful about that recently and just saying, why am I doing this? What kind of energy am I putting behind this? Am I in the right frequency before I'm doing these things? Right? Which has made a world of a difference. Because all of those external manifestation things and inspired action. Oh, it's 555 on my timer. Yes, those work. And you can manifest that way. But when you shift your internal state first and get into the person, embody the energetics of the person that you want to be, <laughs> okay, moving forward, it completely changes the inspired action steps. I have also realized, you know, my business, Soul Harmony Magic, has kind of overtaken my life. And I, it, I don't mean like overtaking my life, like, <laughs> it just, it's just... I have always considered myself a very hard worker, you know what I mean? And I've been trying to like pull away from that. And I've, I've seen the codependency dynamic that I, that I have had with it. <laughs> okay. And I was having a conversation with somebody the other day, um, a client in a session and they were in a job that they didn't like. And I was saying, okay, well, sometimes we have these attachments and it overruns you. Right. Let me drink some water really quick. Hold on. I was like, what if you just see that job as a stepping stone onto the next chapter of your life? Like, it's not your forever. And then, like, and I was helping them, like, work through their goals and everything. And then I get home and I was like, oh, I wonder if this is a stepping stone for me. Like, I thought that was my permanent, like, hey, this is what we're doing. We're a coach. We're, you know, an energy healer, you know, all these things. I was like, what if that is not a solid fact? I have just gotten myself to a place where I'm like, this is what I'm doing, period. I was like, wow, I have probably been cutting off, like, a lot of opportunities and experiences and this has happened several times in my life like there was a time when I wanted to be a clinical psychologist and I was like dead set on that and I was going to school and then I was going to go get my PhD and like halfway in between I was like I don't think I want to be doing this anymore I was like I don't know what I want to do I want to help people but I don't want to do it this way and so it, that was a real struggle for me to let go of that because I was like, no, I said, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> okay. Um, because we're not quitters. <laughs> so, so that was like a real big internal struggle for me during that time, like years ago. God, that was for so long ago. Anyway, but then I let go and then I ended up going all these different routes and then became a coach and an energy healer. And I was like, oh, I think that might be happening again. Not that I don't love doing those things, and but but sometimes we're like creating these narratives over self and saying like I am this, and then you're boxing yourself in. And I'm like, well, what about all these other things over here, right? <laughs> like, if you're narrowing your lens of perception, and like I can recall me so many times saying I am my business, and like being on podcasts and stuff. And I was like, Ooh, you know, when you have like a consciousness shift and then you think back to what you were saying and you're like, Oh, okay. But you only know what you know when you know it. So I was like, I think that I have been limiting myself by this narrative of, I am a spiritual coach, energy healer, business owner of soul harmony magic. 
And I don't know what the future is going to hold, right? Like, I, I don't know what that looks like. Like, I'm still going to keep doing the things that I'm doing right now. But now my timelines are a lot more open and available to me. And after I had that consciousness realization, I was like, oh, snap. I was like, all these other things started popping up. And I was like, no. When you start going through a quantum shift to raise your consciousness, you start looking at all areas of your life and you're like, what have I been doing? <laughs> and they were, it, it, it's not bad things. I like, I've been experiencing a great life. Okay. Like, but not at the capacity that I could. And I realized that I have been keeping myself at this certain level of standard in my life with self and things outside of me. And this morning... I was watching this video on quantum shifting because it helps recommend that when you're going through that. <laughs> Just like you're listening to this now, it really helps you to hear other people's perspectives and experiences and their concepts on those things. And so I was listening to one and I felt something kind of like shift in me and I was like, okay, you know, and then I went to go drop my son off at his dad's house and all of a sudden... I just got the worst migraine ever. Like, I'm talking about, it felt like, oh, 11, 11 on my timer. It felt like I got hit in the head with a brick. And all of a sudden, I felt like I was going to throw up. I got super nauseous, and I got super dizzy. And I was like, I gotta go. <laughs> okay, so I got up. Like, I was having, like, an internal panic attack almost, okay? And I was like, hey, I'm going to go sit in my car for a minute so I can get some fresh air. And they were like, okay, so I go sit in my car, and I'm in the car, in the little meatball, and I've got my head like this. And I'm like, we're okay, we're safe, I love you, I don't know what's happening right now, but it's okay. And I was just like talking over myself. I was like, it's fine, we don't know what's going on. <laughs> and my, like, I shifted at that second. My phone overheated <laughs> and died, and so now we're in a different location. <laughs> Stole the store, but I exited the store <laughs> as it was cooling down. Okay, so anyway, so I shifted at that moment and I became the higher self that I have been working on becoming. And I was like, oh my God, we made it to the new timeline. <laughs> and I said, sometimes, even though when you make it to the new timeline, it is disturbing to your spirit. Okay. <laughs> Like, I'm very excited to be here, and that's great, but you have, like, all your beliefs and your values, like, being kind of questioned, and your reality, you know, you've been through that, <laughs> and so I was just like, okay, well, here we go again, but, it, it, you know, it's almost like you feel like a baby at the new consciousness, okay? <laughs> like, we're restarting over. <laughs> uh, so I just wanted to share that in case it helps anybody else uh, with your quantum shifting experience that you're going through right now it can be really rocky and it can just bring up a lot of stuff right I have been doing a lot of emotional processing um and just diving within I feel like we're all doing that all the time so that's nothing you know new or whatever but just kind of scaling back and sometimes that happens too like I always uh tell people like my friends like my inner circle friends I'm in introspective lands, okay? I'm not as easily, quote unquote, reached. Like, I'm still here and I'm still, you know, having a relationship with people and things. But just just doing a lot of self-observing, okay? <laughs> and I know it's going to be better on the other side. I'm really excited to see what the future holds and the shifts I'm going to be making and the different things that I'm going to be doing. Um, also, I'll share one more thing. Uh, that came up from the other, for me the other day because I was talking to one of my, uh, excuse me, uh, business friends. She's my friend, but like we talk about business stuff too. <laughs> so I said business friend, <laughs> okay, but we're friends, friends. Uh, but she's also a coach and energy healer. Um, and I was saying that I had had this realization that you know when I first started out my business, uh, two 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 on my timer, I was being very professional. Uh, especially with my marketing stuff. I was like, oh, it's got to look like this, you know, so people take me seriously or whatever. And then one day I had this realization. I was like, nobody wants that. Ew. No, no, they don't. That's exactly what we're trying to like pull away from. Right. Like, I don't want it to feel like that. And so I asked my inner children, 
that sometimes they'd be your higher self. I was like, what do you think that we should do? And they're like, let's go on Pinterest and find all these unicorn and dragon and magical fairyland um, graphics, right? That we can start using for our business. And it just started being way more fun. It was like so colorful. I mean, y'all seen that if you're on my Instagram or my TikTok, like it's <laughs> like very whimsical and it just brings so much a different energy in life, especially because I do a lot of inner childhood with people. So I want their inner children to feel like safe and fun and loved, you know what I mean? Supported and just a, a place for them. You know what I mean? Even if you, like you're not consciously looking for that stuff. I know your inner children inside are, I'm like, Hey, we have fun over here. <laughs> right? Um, so, and my inner children love that too. Like it just makes it more, you know, funsy one of these, but anyway, uh, so this time, uh, when I was going through this quantum shift or whatever, I was like, I feel like this business is becoming very structured and not fun all the time, right? Like there's fun facets of it. And my higher self, the one that I sh just shifted into <laughs> that I was talking to previously, I was like, um, these are the things that are going on. I'm just feeling kind of burnt out and not sure what direction to head in. And she was like, okay, first of all, <laughs> you know, that's what your higher self would be talking to you. Be like, okay, well, first of all, <laughs> uh, you are trying to make it like this serious thing and it's actually a creation. It's a creative, it's one big creative project because you are a creator. You are the creator. You are a creator of worlds. Like you're playing this, you know, human Sims character right now and we forget that, but you have literally been out here creating, you know, realities, dimensions, frequencies and stuff. And she was like, this is the same thing the exact same thing and it can be however you want it to be and if you're looking at it through that lens then that's what it will be stop looking at it as a business and start looking at it as an expression of you and something that you have fun times with and fun experiences and it's not a big deal it's a vibe okay <laughs> it's not some entity and i don't want to say entity listen like, not, not like the ghosties <laughs> But like, you know, people say like business entities, <laughs> um, but we love the ghosties. But anyway, <laughs> so I was like, yeah, you're right. It is supposed to be like just a creative fun project. Same thing as like a uh, sticker collage that would be put in together, right? Because that is when I'm having the most fun is when I am looking at, you know, fun art to share with people or talking about, you know, you know, just all the things like it doesn't have to be this serious thing business situation okay <laughs> and, and you know there's a lot of us that are pulling away from that right now that are being like who said the things had to be this way you know like what what is professionalism you know what I'm saying <laughs> so anyway I want to share that in case you're a spiritual business owner and maybe it uh, gives you a different perspective anyway let me know if oh, five 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 on my timer up there so let me know if you gleaned anything from this chat if maybe it's going to help with your shift or maybe if you've experienced quantum shifting like that, like I've done a lot of quantum shifting, timeline jumping and things like that, but this was a little bit different. This was like, I launched myself and it was almost like G force was like, and I was like, uh! <laughs> <laughs> like I was going down a roller coaster. Uh, I'm still kind of feeling a little like up in the clouds. Um, I just ate some food, which was very beneficial. I need to do that <laughs> and drink some water. Look at this cute little sea cow. Uh, so anyway, I love you very much. I hope you have an amazing day today. Uh, and I will see you.